Hey, James Wise here. This is a special off-location episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I was not able to make it into my studio today, but that does not mean the education stops. It is incredibly important that my team and I, we pump these analysis out for you guys as quickly as possible. What I am doing today, my client, April, you have tasked me to look at a very undervalued property in the city of Parma, Ohio. This property is listed at $37,100, and it's in an area where the comps are well over $100,000. So you're going to have to excuse the low quality and the audio that we've got today. I don't have all my studio equipment with me, but I was not going to wait one or two extra days to get this information to you, given how low this property is priced in comparison to the comps. April, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. All right, let's get right into this, April. All right, you sent me an email. You requested that I analyze this property for you. 5302 Tuxedo Avenue, Parma, Ohio, 44134. This is a single family and it's priced at $37,100. It's listed by another realtor. Uh, the realtor works for a company called owners.com. I've never dealt with owners.com before. I think this, this is probably the first time I've ever heard of them. Uh, this is a bank owned property. So it's like a, it's a foreclosure. Okay. So we're going to have a little bit of limited information. Buying a foreclosure is a little bit different than buying a property owned by a private owner, which don't worry about it. We're going to be discussing all of that here in this analysis. A little bit about you though, because just because a property is James Wise approved or James Wise denied uh, for you specifically doesn't mean that that deal is necessarily a bad deal. It just may or may not work for you and what you're trying to do. So it's very important that we go over you, your specific situation. Uh, sometimes, you know, there'll be properties and they will definitely be James Wise denied for some people, but you know, they could like be great investments for others. So let's see exactly what you got going on. So according to uh, all the information that you've sent me about yourself, currently right now, you're working with between $35,000 and $50,000. Now you're looking to either uh, utilize a purchase in all cash. Uh, it does not look like at this moment traditional financing. It is in the cards for you right now. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, if I had any referrals to lenders who would do loans, uh, stated income loans, uh, that may work for you to increase that budget. Uh, but the issue is that that's really few and far between. Um, a lender who's willing to do like a stated income loan uh, is probably not interested in like this particular space, this like low value property space, single family homes. Uh, essentially when you're trying to do the single family space like you have here, like you know, uh, a house like we have here, this Parma home, you really got two options. It's pretty much pay cash or get a traditional loan. So if a traditional loan isn't in the cards for you at this moment, uh, essentially you've got thirty-five dollars to $50,000 uh, total cash to work with. Um, down the road, uh, you know, whether the reason you can't use traditional right now has to do with uh, your W-2 income, like how you make your money, uh, or maybe like a debt to income ratio. Uh, down the road, you may want to work to see if you can get that stuff uh, in a position to where traditional lenders will loan to you. Because in my opinion, the number one reason that you should be buying single family homes is the traditional financing. 
Like that is by far the best type of financing you can get. 30 years, fixed interest, it's tax deductible. That's the best game in town. You're only going to need to put down 25%. So you can buy a $100,000 house, you only need 25000 in cash. Uh, so if you're not in that position yet today, that, that's okay. It doesn't mean you can't invest. I'm just saying later down the road, uh, you might want to look into figuring out a way to position yourself to be able to do that. Because uh, per your email, you know, in the next three years, your plan is essentially to make between three and four thousand dollars a month in passive income off of rental properties. So to get to that point, you're gonna eventually need to use leverage. There's probably gonna be no scenario uh, where you're able to get from where you are right now today to that point in three years out utilizing leverage. Uh, so that is gonna be very important. Pulling up the pictures of this house uh, for you, we'll put that up full screen for you. Um, you know, first of all. You said you're interested in B or C neighborhoods. As far as the neighborhood goes, you picked a great neighborhood. Parma, it's a solid neighborhood. And by all intents and purposes, this is, uh, you know, on the very surface, it appeals, uh, it appears rather to be a pretty gnarly deal because we have comps that are going to be well over 100,000, which we'll go over later. And you've identified a property that is extremely low. Like there's no property in Parma. Uh, that's going to be priced anywhere near this. But looking through these photos, we're going to see if you're able to achieve a deal, maybe a bird deal, right? Off, off the surface, this looks like it could be a bird deal. Can you achieve it with the amount of cash that you have at your disposal? Mm -hmm. So from the front here, nothing looks, you know, out, out of the ordinary, you know, just a nice, normal looking home in a nice neighborhood, Parma. You know, here's a photo of the back of the house. Again, nothing is sticking out to me as totally atrocious. The only thing that I noticed, and uh, this is where like a trained eye is gonna be very important because, you know, I'm not even in my studio today, right? I, I'm off location, you're off location, but if you have the right set of knowledge and information, you could learn a lot about these properties and start to identify costs just from sitting at you know your desktop at home. Like this one right here, this photo, it doesn't appear like there's much going on, but I have found a $10,000 problem for you in this photo. If you look, you can see it a little bit on the right, the driveway is very, very old. That's very old concrete, and I'm looking at some cracking. Hard to tell, I only see a couple cracks, but I'm assuming that there is gonna be a ton of other cracks on this driveway. Now, in the city of Parma, we don't have point of sale inspections, okay? In the Cleveland market, some cities have what's called point of sale inspections, some cities don't. If the city has a point of sale inspection, what that means is the city comes in before any seller can sell a property, before title can transfer. By law, the city has to inspect the property. Some are interior, uh, interior and exterior, some are exterior only, and they will issue citations. Now, the seller has to actually clear all those citations prior to transferring title, or they can have the buyer assume all of those, and the buyer typically has to put money in escrow, then the buyer gets a certain amount of time from the city after the closing to make all those repairs, and then the city will release the escrow funds. Parma is not one of those cities, okay? Parma does not do that. But what Parma does do, and this, this is where local expertise is coming in, this is why it's incredibly important for you and people like you to purchase these analysis, because this isn't like something that's advertised, you know, this, this is information that you can only get knowing the local market and like on a very micro level, right? The Cleveland market is very, very big. Parma is just one specific suburb in Cleveland. But what Parma does, and they don't do this for all homes. They only do this for non-owner occupied homes, like rental properties. Uh, you have to register all rental properties in Parma, also vacant properties. So if you bought a house just with the intention to flip it, you were never going to rent it. Don't think that you can skate away from this because they require you to register uh, vacant homes as well. The, the cost to register a vacant home is actually $50 more than it is to register a rental home. A rental home is $150 a year registration. A vacant home in Parma is $200. Uh, so depending on like what your plan of attack would be for a property, you know, yours is a rental, but maybe someone else is looking at this like as a flip. You're spending between $150 and $200, and you're on the city's radar. So Anytime either a vacant home is registered or a rental property is registered, the city comes out after the sale and they inspect the exterior only of the property. And they are very good stickers for concrete issues, okay? So these cracks, this really old driveway, I would anticipate, I only have, because you've got the desktop analysis, right? We didn't get the one with the video tour, so my team hasn't physically been on location. But just from what I'm seeing right here, worst case scenario, the city's probably going to make you replace the entire driveway. So that could be up to $10,000.
Now you're looking at probably like seven, seven, seventy bucks a square foot or something like that for your driveway. I don't know exactly know the size of the driveway, but let's just like worst case scenario, we'll call it about 10 grand. It's not going to be more than 10 grand. It very well could be less, but we'll call it 10 grand. So just this little photo around alone here, we just found ourselves a little clue that, oh, hey, there's a $10,000 issue I got to keep in mind. Now, moving on, the rest of the property, it just looks old and beat up. Like you can see from this living room, that floor, it's all beat all, holy hell. Uh, old, old fireplace, just this decorative fireplace, just so you know. Very important when you have rental properties that you remove uh, the gas lines going to these fireplaces. That's just a hazard, uh, a liability that you don't need to worry about. Doesn't add any rental value. So that's nice. That's already done. Uh, but you can see just the property is just old and just just beat down and gross. You know, this right here, we got uh, like green trim. That's that's pretty hideous old beat up kitchen, the floor is all disgusting. Like there's nothing salvageable in this kitchen whatsoever. Uh, more, another shot of the driveway here. You can see just like pretty old nasty and then we just have a garage that's totally beat to hell. And uh, when I run over, when I go over the estimate uh, for how much I think it's gonna take to actually fully renovate this, we'll talk about the garage a little bit too. Uh, and then here is the bathroom. A couple big things here in the bathroom, you see, the, the blue painter's tape over the toilet, okay? And then you see the green tags over in the tub shower and on the vanity. This is pretty important. I mentioned earlier, this is a bank owned property. This is a foreclosure, okay? This is not owned by a private entity. You are dealing directly with the bank in this property. So when you deal directly with the bank, there's gonna be a lot more unknowns, okay? And also you're gonna pretty much have to pay cash. Now for you, it looks like you have to pay cash anyway. You got 35 to $50,000 to work with. Um, so you are already on the cash bandwagon, but if you didn't, like if you wanted to get a loan, this would not be a property that would be a good candidate for that. Here is why. Those green tags, what those mean is the utilities are off. There's no gas, there's no electric, and there's no water to this property. Most banks, if not all banks, will never let you turn the utilities on during the due diligence. Now, I have access, you don't have access to this, but as a broker, I have access to, to broker remarks. So the listing agent from that company, owners, uh, owners.com, in the broker notes that you can never see in the general public, uh, they have specifically stated that the bank is not going to turn that water on for any buyers for any reason. So more or less 99% of the time you're trying to buy a bank loan, that's pretty much going to be the case. Uh, but in this particular situation, we know for 100% certainty that you cannot turn that on. So what that means is if you did have the intention to buy a property like this with a traditional loan, which is what you should be doing if you're investing in the single family space. So keep that in your back pocket. Because again, like I said, it might not be in the cards for you right now today, but if you want to get to your goals of three to $4,000 in monthly rents, in the next three years, you're going to need to utilize that financing. You just don't have enough cash uh, to get you to your goals. So you need to leverage your funds. But with this particular property, outside of fact, you're not ready right now. You couldn't do it because it's not going to pass your bank, your bank now, not the bank selling it, but your bank. It's not going to pass your bank's appraisal because it's technically not livable. For a property to be livable, it needs to have all the utilities function. It needs to have heat, needs to have electricity, needs to have working uh, water and plumbing. Your bank cannot verify that that will be the case with this particular property because the bank that is selling it to you and your bank, if you were using a bank right here, uh, that bank is not going to allow you to turn the water on to test it. So that that is a, a big, big, huge unknown. Um, so that just kicks us right back to cash. So. The question is though, is it a good deal for you cash? You have 50 G's, right? We did find a $10,000 gotcha, but you have 50 G's. So if we add that in, it's 37,100. We add that $10,000 in there, that's 47,100. Is that gonna work? Would that work? Can you do this deal? I said earlier, the comps are just amazing in this neighborhood. Now I'm gonna pull the comps up for you. I pulled quarter mile comps up. This is every property that sold in a quarter mile of this property in the last six months. Now, we start off with this one right here, 5002 Tuxedo Ave. 
that's on the same street, obviously, very, very close. This one sold for 70,000. It took forever to sell, it took 168 days. Uh, this is like a traditional property you can expect. Like, here's the thing too with your property, and this is uh, one of the specific questions that you asked me, okay? You asked me if there was a big difference between two bedrooms and three bedrooms in the, in the Cleveland area, and like, you know, the rentability and all that jazz. Uh, here's the thing too with like your property in Parma specifically. Parma specifically, Parma's a pretty big suburb. Parma is the biggest suburb in the greater Cleveland area. There's like close to 80,000 residents in Parma. Primarily speaking, what we see in Parma is gonna be three bed, one bath bungalows that are usually gonna have about 1,200 square foot. The particular home that you have looked into, that is a little bit of an outlier, okay? because that property is only two beds, one bath, and it's small. We only have, where is it, uh, listing agent put it, we only have 851 square feet to work with. Two beds, one bath, 851 square feet, in an area where it's traditionally like 80 to 90% of the inventory in this area is gonna be three bed, one bath, 1200 square foot. So we have a little bit of an outlier. So as I read you the comps, we're gonna have to keep that in mind that it's always gonna be a little bit lower here. But going through these comps, so this one, this is three beds, two baths. As you can see, it falls under that normal thing, right? The, you know, like around a 1,200 square foot bungalow. This one here is 1,092 specifically. So, you know, right there in the area. You know, you can see here that this is just dated, pretty dated, pretty ugly. So this needs a lot of cosmetic work, but I'm assuming on this property, the bones are probably pretty decent because these, these homes, they're all pretty much the same. We got like several of these in our portfolio. Like, you know, I flip these, I flip these all the time. As a matter of fact, we have a show about specifically house flipping and we just flipped a brick bungalow in Parma. Um, so check that out. I'll put that in the show notes below. Uh, that's episode one of our newest show, the house flipping show. And that was a cool deal because I sold that for 132000 and that's very, very close to this. It might be a little bit more than a quarter mile. As a matter of fact, I know it's more than a quarter mile because it didn't pop up on this comps report. Um, but it's same general pricing. So 132000 So if you had a three-bedroom, that pretty much top of the market because we decked that thing out. But you'll see that from the, uh, the show notes. But this one, this was the cheapest one that sold. This one here, 5002 Tuxedo. Sold for 70 And it's because, you know, it's totally dated, right? You got the super old carpet, the nasty old kitchen, old old like grandma, grandpa wallpaper. In the basement here, if you see this flooring, uh, that's this is something that's pretty common. That right there, that's probably asbestos uh, tile flooring. Moving on to the second one here that I've pulled up for you, 5502 Merkel in Parma. Now this one sold for 91,000. That was on the market for 101 days, okay? You know, same thing, we got three beds. This one also has two baths, and this one, 1,248 square foot. So it falls pretty much in that general area. Now this one was vacant. The price is a little bit higher, because again, it's it's very unrealistic uh, or normal to expect to buy anything in Parma for like under 100 grand. So these two properties under 100 grand, and again, you know, just dated. Probably have pretty decent bones, and they're in the general like size of the neighborhood here. Uh, and this one, just some cosmetic fixes, and this would probably be a pretty nice property. So I think it's, Probably sold on the pretty cheap end just because of uh, the low pricing. And then over here, we got another three bedroom home sold at 104000 You can see from the photos, this was sold uh, by an owner occupant. They were still living there. Nothing like uh, too crazy, just minor cosmetic updating would be needed for this property. Like if you had uh, like all neutral decor and like an updated kitchen and bath, this would probably be a $130,000, $140,000 property. Okay, moving on, we got another brick. We got a brick bungalow, three beds, one bath, square footage, 1,300 square foot. You know, not the most modern and updated thing, but again, the price point, 106,500, so we're still on the low end, because it's not super updated. You know, it looks like a pretty solid property, though. You know, you got your updated electrical right here. You got a furnace right here that's probably only 10, 15 years old. This water tank, if I had to guess, is probably around 10 years old. Now we get a little bit higher up, $112,000. Another bungalow, three bed, two bath, 1,092 feet. You can see here this kitchen, it's not the most updated kitchen in the world, but it's starting to look a little bit nicer. Over here we got nice shiny hardwood flooring. We got the neutral paint. Okay, we got a partially finished basement in here. You know, I obviously have some kids, but this is just like a, a pretty darn nice looking house. And the price is reflecting that. 
continue to go up. This one is a ranch, but again, it's got the three beds, it's got two baths, 1,132 square foot, sold at 112,000. You know, kitchen's looking nice. We got the neutral looking decor in here. We go up to 117,000. You know, we got stainless steel appliances in this one. Nice flowing hardwoods. You know, people are still living here, so you're gonna see the different colors, but we got some nice upgrades. Like here, you got a pretty upgraded shower, okay? You know, I got a little patio here in the back. Uh, just as a FYI, this little, uh, like above ground pool that these folks put in, like, I don't know if that, was, if that stayed with the house. Probably did, assuming since they took the picture of it, but like something like that don't really add any value, just as a FYI. Going down here, 122,000. Uh, this one's looking nice, you know, pretty nice. Uh, you know, just just nice overall, nice little houses here. And then 124,000, you know, we got the dark hardwoods, neutral decor, white painted trim. This is a little dated, you know, this 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 uh, this bathroom here, a little dated. So to get top, top, top dollar, you'd want to upgrade that a little bit. So those are all the comps there. We range from 70 all the way to 124, and that's just quarter mile here. Like I said, the one I just flipped, which is like totally decked out, that's just sold for 132,000. I sold that within one day of going on the market because I had the stainless steel appliances. And it was empty, right? You know, these, we got some examples of some nice homes, but they still need a little bit of work. Um, but you could already see, even like not being specifically totally decked out like my flip was, the value's there. I mean, we went all the way up to 124,000. So on the surface, you know, we have a huge gap between uh, the price point of the property you're interested in and what they could sell for. Now, I know you're interested in this as a rental, but this isn't very important. When you're looking at rental properties, especially like projects like this that need rehab and, and possibly need work, you can't look at just the price point and the rent. Like I know we want to rent it, but we got to make sure that you're getting in uh, for the appropriate price. Like if you bought a rental property for $100,000 and it rented for $3,000 a month, yes, that seems like a great deal, right? Because the cash flow numbers would be perfect on that. But if you found out like a month later that everyone else in that city was buying that same $100,000 house that would rent for $3,000 a month, even though it seemed like an awesome deal for you, but you found out later they were all buying it for $50,000, what well, seemed like a really good deal for you, you actually lost $50,000, right? Cash went up twice, it's great, but you lost $50,000. Now, there's no properties I'm aware of that are gonna achieve those numbers, but that, you know, that's just an example. That's why I wanted to run through this for you, because um, it could lead you to believe so far, like everything's looking good, everything is stacking up. Uh, could this potentially be a good deal? Now, with your property, given that again, it's a little bit of an outlier, we got two beds and it's a little bit smaller. If you totally decked it out, I believe that we can probably get a maximum value out of your property. Probably, if I had to guess, uh, it's a little difficult because again, it's an outlier. We don't have very many three bedrooms to go, or two bedrooms rather, to go off of. I would put a maximum value of your property probably ninety-five to hundred thousand uh, dollars, just because it's smaller. But if we totally decked it out, made it look really good, now. By decking it out like I'm about to explain, because you have to do a renovation on this property anyway. You can't just leave it how it is. It's completely uninhabitable right now. So the renovation budget I'm about to go through with you, this is what you would need to do to this property uh, to just, because you have to rehab it. So there's no point to half-assing your rehab. So you pretty much need to do everything I'm saying. So not only would this be the rehab you'd want to do if you were trying to like flip it or do a bird, this is also the rehab you'd want to do to actually get it to be property and in that condition looking that nice I would anticipate we would probably rent this property for about a thousand dollars a month now some of those other properties that we just went through in Parma even though they weren't going to be as updated as what yours would look like those would probably rent for a thousand as is or like 1150 maybe even 1200 like if we had the beautiful look that we're going to give to this property because again you have to do the renovation anyway and it was a three-bed house in Parma we'd probably be in like the 12 to 1300 dollar a month range let's back it down maybe about 12 12 is, is, is pretty reasonable and if we go with the section 8 uh, stuff we could probably get it even higher if you go to holtonwines.com if you're not familiar with section 8 if you go to our FAC okay and you go uh, to the investor FAC you click on the section 8 tab it's up top and it's also in the bottom 
it gives you what Section 8 considers fair market value. Okay, so for three bedroom homes, like Section 8 considers fair market value uh, $12.93, right? That right there, it's a CMHA's payment standard. CMHA is the housing authority in the Cleveland market that operates the Section 8 program. So depending on what market you're in, it's going to be a different housing authority. Uh, so I, I use those terms interchangeably. That's what that is. Okay, so 1293 is essentially a pretty good ballpark of what they would give someone for a three bedroom voucher. So if you had a house like that, Parma is a nice B class neighborhood. I usually really push people to do Section 8 in the rougher neighborhoods because typically you do kind of get a rougher clientele. So when you're in like a nice neighborhood like Parma and you have a nice house, the cash paying tenants and the Section 8 tenants, the price gaps. It gets a little bit closer, and the cash paying tenants are usually much higher. Like, if you watch me do any of these analysis or watch me talk about properties I'm selling in like low C class neighborhoods, sometimes the cash paying market would be like 650, uh, but the Section 8 market would be like 800, 850. It's a bigger gap. So here, not so much, because I said we could probably get about 1,200, right? And the the Section 8 program is only going to be about 93 bucks a month. It is a way to increase your cash flow, but I'd probably go for a cash tenant. Now, on the two-bedroom voucher, Section 8, they'll go up to as high as 981. But here, I think we could probably get 1,000 from a cash paying tenant just because we're going to make the property look so nice. So that's just something to bear in mind. But what do we got to do to get to the point of bringing in that kind of rent for you? So I pulled everything up on the screen for you here. Now, you would like to buy this property. You have $35,000 to $50,000. The purchase price, everything looks hot so far, right? We have like, holy shit, we got cops around the $120,000, $130,000 range. It's a nice neighborhood. We'll get a thousand bucks in rent. Everything seems pretty good. But does it work for you specifically? Like, does this deal work for April? Is it gonna be James Wise approved for April and what you wanna do, April? Well, your purchase price, $37,100. But the issue lies. The renovation that you need to do to this property to get it rent ready, to get it in that condition is going to be too, uh, too cost intensive for, for what you have. In no particular order, just based off of what I am looking at right here, just from my knowledge of you know, construction, renovations, and uh, like what we need to do to this property. Remember, we're going to go into this uh, without a lot of info. So when you make any offer, you always want to make your offers contingent on a third party inspection. Now this is a bank deal. And again, we're not going to be able to turn those utilities on. So some of the unknowns that are kind of open, even after your inspection, they're probably still going to be open for you because you're, you know, if you turn the water on, we could check exactly what issues you have. So even though you get an inspection on this property, you're still going to have a serious amount of unknowns. So I kind of, just laid out like the worst case scenarios for you. Like that roof, given the rest of the house and in, in the picture, pulling the picture up again real quick, if you look in the top left, I see some discoloration and stuff. Um, back to the chart here. I pet punched in like just assuming you'll have to pay for that roof. So we got 37,100 for your purchase price. Roof, worst case scenario, you're gonna have to get a new roof. I would say odds are pretty good you'll have to get a roof, that's 5,000. You're gonna to have to redo all those floors in that property, like those just beat to shit old hardwoods. It's just not gonna be acceptable. Uh, so you're gonna to have to spend $3,000 on that. Now that does not cover the flooring in the kitchen and the bath. Uh, bear that in mind. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. Make sure you're subscribed to our investor mailing list. We are going to send you an email with the latest investment properties for sale every single day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can expect a full video offering, just like what you've seen today, in every one of these emails. Next, paint, right? 
You can't just you know rent that house out to somebody or try to get a bank to come in and refinance that house uh, looking like it does. We gotta repaint the whole thing. So we're looking at probably about three grand for that. And this is all labor and materials, right? This is your all-in cost for everything. Like these are ballparks that like Holton Wise, we would charge you to do this. So like we would handle 100% of everything. So this would be like your all-in number. Kitchen. 10 grand, right? That kitchen's totally unsalvageable, and that would also include new flooring in the kitchen. So we would have the, the finished hardwoods, nice hardwoods throughout the entire home, and then in the kitchen and the bath, we'd have like a vinyl flooring. Uh, so you're looking at 10 Gs for the kitchen. You gotta completely redo the bath. That bath is like totally unusable. Five Gs. I mentioned it earlier at the beginning when we went over the pictures for the first time, but that driveway, worst case scenario, I think Parma's gonna cite you for that driveway, and you might have to just replace the whole damn thing. You know, it's pretty old. I'm sure we have cracking pretty much everywhere. Like, they'll make you replace every single block with cracking. You know, by the time you get a, a truck out there, you got, you know, a super old driveway. Like, you know, a house is built in the 50s, so essentially you got, like, 70-year-old concrete. You might as well just do the whole damn thing. Just knock it out so you don't got to worry about it again. Because uh, they, they'll keep, you know, as a rental property, they inspect it every single year. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to spend four grand, like, doing a few things this year and then four grand three years from now. Just you do the whole damn thing. So 10 grand on that. Furnace, we got a we got a worst case scenario. Of this could that furnace work? Possibly, but you know you just bought a brand new rental property, or maybe you're trying to flip it. Like you want a rental property, but you know assuming eventually you'd want to cash out because again to hit your goals of all that cash for the next three years, you're going to have to bring in some leverage. You can't just deploy all your cash into the deal. Uh, you know to do when you go to get it reappraised by your bank to do the refi out because you don't want it to appraise at thirty seven thousand. You want to get it to appraise closer to a hundred thousand up that capital now and then use it to your, your next deals to build up your portfolio. So with all that in mind, you're probably going to need a new furnace, right? Because the existing furnace, if it does work, which you wouldn't find out until after you bought it because your inspector can't tell you that because you can't turn the gas on. Pencil in three Gs for a furnace. Hot water tank, same situation. That's going to be a G. Electrical, power's off. So I don't know what's going on in there. So I pencil in another 3000 for that. Uh, that garage, it just, it looks all beat to hell. The siding's all jacked up. Um, the roof on the garage might be messed up. It probably leaks. The door's all messed up. So just based on the picture, I don't think that's like a garage that's in, in great repair. So I penciled in another 2000 to address whatever we find is wrong with that garage. Uh, in addition to that, I think I skipped a line. Under the hot water tank, we have additional plumbing repairs that I put in there, $1,000. Maybe some copper is stolen in this property. I don't know. I haven't been inside the property, but you have a property sitting empty like this, a bank foreclosure. Criminals will break into the properties, and they will cut out the copper for scrap. I don't know if that happened. It could have. Another thing is those green green tags. Remember, that shows that the property was waterproofed. Sometimes these banks, they don't get in there. I'm sorry, not waterproofed, but uh, winterized, rather. Sometimes these banks, they don't get in there and winterize them right away or winterize them in the correct manner. So what could happen is if this property was vacant during the winter, uh, gas goes off, there's water in the pipes, freezes, expands, it cracks the piping. So I don't know what situation we have uh, going on with the rest of the plumbing um, outside of like what you add when you do your bathroom, but let's just assume there's probably a few issues, right? Because the house is just beat to shit. So we, we, we should never expect the house to be in great shape. Um, and, you know, again, unknown. Your, uh, your home inspector is not going to be able to tell you at your inspection, oh, yeah, you got hairline cracks in here, here, and here. Uh, like, if there's missing piping, he can tell you that, obviously. You can see that from the basement. But you got to pencil in some money there. So I did another 1000 there. I mentioned the electrical, 3000 We mentioned the garage, 2000 And then I put another 2000 here. Doors, locks, smoke detectors, CO detectors. You have to, obviously, install smoke detectors, CO detectors uh, for your rental properties to be in a court, you know, be safe, fair housing law, you know, landlord, tenant stuff. You got to cover yourself, cover, cover your butt, make sure your tenants are protected. That's super small potatoes. You got to change all the locks, small potatoes, but doors, right? We got exterior doors on the front, the back, interior doors everywhere. You know, they're all jacked up, so you're probably going to have to replace all those, all the hardware in those. Um, miscellaneous, I pencil in another five grand for you. I don't know the condition of all the windows. Maybe we have to replace some, all of them, none of them. I don't know. Uh, but the yard, yard's also pretty beat up. The basement, sometimes we get a lot of moisture in basements. You know, this is an older property. This property was built in 1929. So we have a 90 year old property here. You're not gonna finish the basement. At no point are you gonna 
try to finish it, making it living space most likely. The best use for this property, you know, especially with the lower budget, would be to just keep it unfinished. But you may have to install a dehumidifier. You may have to dry lock it. There's just a bunch of unknowns that I just don't know right now. So we're going to pencil in at least five grand for all that. So this is a very fair and accurate representation of what you can reasonably expect if you purchase this property. So that would be a total renovation of $53,000. Now it's starting to really make sense why this property is so much cheaper than everything else. So if you bought it at $37,100, you have to spend every bit of that fifty-three dollars There's really no other way around it, right? I understand you're not trying to flip it. You just want it to be a rental, but you have to install it. Like you couldn't rent that kitchen to anybody, right? You have to do a kitchen. So you might as well do a nice kitchen. There's no other way around this renovation budget. So that's going to put you at a total investment of $90,100. So specifically for you, April, this deal has got to be 100% James Wise denied. Uh, just because specifically, it's essentially double the available budget that you have to work with. So you can't do the deal, right? Yes, you could buy the property now with the cash you have, but afterwards, you know, it's just going to sit there empty. There's nothing you can do to the property. And it's on the open market. It's listed on the MLS. So it's not like you can buy it at 37000 and resell it to somebody for five or $10,000 more. Like, you know, it's already being out there and exposed to everybody. So this is probably, you know, around where the, the fair market value of this property is. So this deal has got to be James Wise denied for you uh, because it, at this point, you just can't afford to do the deal. Now, if for whatever reason, maybe you did have access to another fifty grand that I don't know about, does the deal make sense in that case? Still probably not. Again, I anticipate that the total max value here based on all our other comps, again, you've got an outlier. You've got a small two bedroom home in an area of all three bedroom homes. I think 95 to 99,000 is the max is gonna be worth. If you're all into this thing for 90,100, and that would have to be all cash, because even if you could finance, you still couldn't do this one because you know it's not livable. And then you got to pump out a $50,000 renovation. That's going to be a pretty damn long renovation. A lot of risk. There could be even more unknowns, like stuff I didn't even address. The house is all beat to hell. We know nothing is like good here. It's foreclosure. Generally, people don't take care of foreclosures. Uh, what if the main drain line uh, is, is crushed and you have to replace that? That's another three or $4,000. There's just like, there could be other unknowns. Uh, so there probably would be no way that renovation could go much lower than 53,000, but it could definitely go up a little bit. Uh, so there, there's some risk and, you know, depending on uh, just like how everything went, it's, it's possible you can deal with delays. The city could cite more things I haven't even thought about or addressed at this point in time. All of that said, like, I guess the moral of what I'm trying to say is even if like it was possible for you to get the other 50,000, I still don't think the deal will be good for you because at the end of the day, that's like a lot of work, a lot of risk, a lot of things to undertake uh, to only gain equity of between $5,000 and maybe $10,000. And then at that point, again, we have a rental that's renting for like, you know, a thousand bucks a month. Just, there's just better options out there. Like if you want to stick to your budget of $35,000 to $50,000, Parma's not going to be where you want to be. I understand you're attracted to it because it's a B-class neighborhood and, and it is nicer. Uh, but with the budget you're playing for, you just can't get into that market right now. You don't, you don't have the funds. Um, so you're going to look probably closer to the C-class uh, neighborhoods, which you want to do to reasonably find yourself uh, a single family home. You could find them in the C-class neighborhoods, okay? And you could be all in. You could buy something for maybe like thirty to 35000 that needs a lot less work to it. In a C-class neighborhood, like Garfield Heights, for instance, that would probably uh, be a good place. Um, or Cleveland itself. Garfield is high C, low B, but sometimes you could find some pretty nice uh, deals there because they have a POS and a lot of the owner occupant buyers they get pushed out of that because you have to put all that money up front in escrow. So you can maybe buy something for like maybe 30 grand with a $20,000 escrow um, that scares away a lot of owner occupant buyers. And you could possibly be into something like that. Or you want to look to like the West side of Cleveland, like old Brooklyn would be a, a pretty good neighborhood for you. So that's four for one Oh nine. You can go up to the North of the, that zip code, the Brooklyn center neighborhood, four for one, three, five, four for one, one, all neighborhoods in Cleveland. 
where you can probably achieve your goal of getting into a decent single family home here uh, for that price of 50,000. Going back to that section eight fact too, like, cause now your quality is gonna be a little bit lower. Section eight is gonna be something that might be something that will appeal to you, right? And uh, when you do that, I'm talking three bedroom house, right? Get a three bedroom, one bedroom, three bedroom, one bathroom house. If you're in the old Brooklyn neighborhood, right? You know, section eight, I'm not gonna say that they'll give you as much as 1293. Um, cash paint tenants will probably pay 950 to 1000 for a nice single family in the old Brooklyn area. When we do section eight in that neighborhood, uh, we get a lot higher amount from section eight, but there's like a whole thing section eight has to go through to actually specifically give you a quote for what they'll rent that specific property for. Uh, that's why we have this whole fact. We kind of explained some of that. Um, so best case scenario, you get 1293. Uh, I can't guarantee it, but I guarantee you, you definitely will get above 950, right? So you're probably in like the 1,000 to 1050 range if you section eighted a, a home in that neighborhood. And what you want to do, you want to seek properties that are priced as close to that $50,000 as possible. In all reality, you want to do the, the minimum amount of repairs. You want to try to find something that maybe needs like 10, 15 K. Maybe we just got to do cosmetic stuff to it. Just minimal stuff so you can get in, uh, get it rent ready, and then put a tenant in and then move on later. That would probably be a better use uh, of your existing funds right now. Because just trying to push up to a market like the Parma market, there's, there's just no way. Like it's, it's essentially full scope. Like the reason this property is so much lower is because it requires a $50,000 renovation and that's insane. Who, who's gonna do that much work? You know, you're from, uh, let me go back to your email. You said you're from Seattle, Washington, okay? Uh, and this is obviously gonna be your first foray in the Cleveland market. This is not a beginner level um, project. So definitely James Wise denied for you. I wouldn't wanna see you try to get in uh, to a project like this. A couple other things I wanna touch on uh, why I got you here. I've pulled up on the screen for you the Cuyahoga County Auditor website because one of the questions that you asked me that I wanna touch on is, uh, you said, I've noticed a large difference in the property tax amounts. I realize there's differences in the neighborhoods, locations, et cetera. My question though, do people challenge the property tax assessment with any reasonable positive outcome? So the reason you see variances, there's, there's two reasons really. Number one, uh, the big reason you're gonna see variances is every, every single city has a different tax rate, okay? And uh, in the notes below, I'm gonna include a link uh, to every single city in the Cleveland market's tax rate so you can actually see what the tax rate is. And then from there, once you have your tax rate, you know what the tax rate's gonna be for that city. But the other reason you see a big variance is because homes, it, it depends what the county's actually got it appraised at. Like your house that you're interested in looking at right now. The, the, if you look on the website right here, I got it all pulled up for you. Over here where it says market values, the total value that the county is uh, assuming your property is worth is $68,800. So right now, if the particular owner of the property right now, like say somebody else bought it, say you bought it for $37,100, but you didn't have any money to do the renovation. Um, say you just bought it for $37,100. In that situation, you would be able to challenge this and you would say, hey, my house ain't worth $68,000. My house is only worth $37,000. I just bought it. It was listed on the MLS. That's what I paid for it. So you could challenge that and you would probably win. They would probably cut your tax rate almost in half. So right now, it looks like uh, da, 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 da. right here, right here, $2,013.36. That's what the tax bill every year for this property is. So if you did nothing to the property, you can get that tax bill cut in half. However, if you put that $53,000 into it and then uh, you refinanced it out or maybe you sold it to somebody else and it appraised for what I think it's worth, ninety-five dollars to $100,000, the tax rate would then be reassessed by the county next time they do their assessments. They always look at the purchase price of like what it's really worth and the taxes would go up. So uh, 2013 36 is what it's being billed at currently today. If you did nothing to it, you could challenge it, you'd win. Um, but if you renovated it, those taxes could go up. So you can take uh, the information I've given you 
Again, in the notes, there's going to be a link to all of the property tax rates in the Cleveland market for every single city. Like Garfield Heights, Euclid, Lakewood, they have really high tax, tax rates. Shaker Heights is another one. Cleveland Heights as well. Their tax rates are considerably higher than Cleveland itself or Parma. So you have that. But then from there, you have to see exactly what the county is listing at. So if you want to buy a property and you're looking at the taxes of it, you're maybe going to buy it for 100 grand, go to the auditor website and see what the county has the market value. If the county's got the market value at 200 grand, well, hell yeah, when you buy it for 100 grand, you'll be able to challenge it, you're going to be able to win. But maybe it's only uh, the county only thinks it's worth 50 grand. Remember, keep in mind, oh man, my taxes are probably going to be going up. G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month so for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Expanding your real estate holdings to multiple markets is a great way to reduce your risk. Birmingham, Alabama features an unemployment rate that is well below the national average. In fact, Birmingham's growing tech scene has been highlighted by both Fords and Barons. That, coupled with Birmingham's low price to rent ratio, is why so many investors from around the U.S. have been flocking to the area to put their money to work. Spartan Invest has helped hundreds of investors successfully buy cash flowing real estate in Birmingham. With an average tenant stay of 39 months, it's easy to see why Spartan Invest maintains an annual occupancy rate above 95%. To learn more about the turnkey opportunities in Birmingham, Alabama, contact Spartan Invest today at 205-202-4118 or visit them online at spartaninvest.com. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. Last thing I want to hit for you, April, before I let you go, before we get out of here, is you had asked me um, if potential investors ever come to visit Cleveland or if like they ever tour the Holton Wise offices and like how that whole process is, maybe like do we tour you around like rental properties, things of that nature. Um, no, typically we don't tour buyers around rental properties. Back in the day when we were first getting started, uh, we were doing things like that. Uh, but at this point, our volume is just incredibly high. And if we're ever selling something that's like completely occupied, uh, the reason that we've been so successful in selling rental properties, and uh, like the reason people like you come to me for these analyses is, is I only deal in investment real estate. The majority of uh, real estate agents out here in the Cleveland market, you know, they deal with residential real estate. They drive people around and then those people, they want to live in those homes. That's how they sell homes. I don't sell homes like that. I look at homes as investment people. We're investors. I talk the talk. I walk the walk. This is what I do. I built a $50 million portfolio from the ground up here in the Cleveland market. So when I see houses, I see dollar signs. I don't look at drapes. I don't drive buyers and sellers around. That's just not what I do, right? Uh, so for those reasons, uh, we've just become so much more successful in the investment space because you take like the residential realtor that in their brain, like, oh, investor wants to buy a house. Great. I'll do the exact same thing I do to Jimmy and Kathy when they want to live in the house. I'll show them the house. I'll talk about the stuff. Like, oh, it's a beautiful living room, blah, 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 blah. But the big roadblock for that is tenants are living there. They fucking hate that shit. They don't want you coming in there. They're going to try to block it. It, it never ever works. So we became so successful because what we do is we do everything through video. Um, when we sell occupied rental properties, okay, we video the property one time and one time only. From there, we make people buy the properties sight unseen. Now that does not mean, 
that people can't do their due diligence. That is very important. I don't ever want you guys out there trying to buy a property with no due diligence. If you're talking to a turnkey provider and they're like, nope, can't see the property, nope, can't get your own inspection, nope, can't get an appraisal, those are red flags. That's how you get ripped off. We still let you do all that, but we're not going to be looking loose and just let fucking 45 people go into the homes and bother these tenants. That's how the sellers lose their tenants, right? And the tenants are what actually makes these properties cash flow producing assets. So what we do, full transparency, we show you the property, we film everything we can when it's occupied, and then you have to put your offers in, but you make them contingent on that inspection, contingent on the appraisal. You still get those things, but that way we know a buyer's come to the table, they've watched the video, they understand, they're ready to make that purchase, and then we only have to bother that tenant the one time, but we've already done, as sellers, done our due diligence on the buyer to make sure we're not just calling the tenant every six, six hours with some new buyers that want to show up to the property. Uh, so that's how we do that. And that has been wildly successful. Uh, we've been the number one seller of rental property in Cleveland for a very long time because of how successful that is. And, you know, these videos are watched nationwide. Um, and, you know, April, if you're not subscribed to my daily list uh, in the show notes below, click that to subscribe because, you know, this is a property you saw out there on the MLS and you wanted to get an investor's take on this. And that's what I've given you, but obviously you had to pay for it. All the properties I sell, like I just said, they come with their own analysis and tour and that is completely free and you just make an offer. But since we're so popular, we're so big, our demand is so high, like I'm sure you've watched Holton Wise TV many, many times and you'll notice the view counters and all the videos, a lot of people are watching Holton Wise TV. Whenever I put out a property, okay, I usually have between 15 and 20 offers every single day, typically when I email those uh, deals out, because every day at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, that's when I email out the video. Um, so definitely make sure you're subscribed to that list if you're not. I email out the video and everybody bids on it that day. Uh, so because the demand's so high and so many people are bidding, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense for me to uh, pay team members to, to drive people around to properties they couldn't buy anyway. You're probably not getting quick enough. But I encourage you uh, to do your due diligence on Cleveland, though. Um, there is no reason that you should not fly out to Cleveland, get a hotel, stay in the area, tour the neighborhoods, or even go ahead and find yourself a traditional uh, residential realtor who is used to driving people around, okay? That's, that's why the MLS analysis show exists. There are, there's over 5,000 realtors in the Cleveland market, and 99% of them are used to driving people around. Will they be able to get you in uh, occupied rental properties? Probably not, but you could utilize them. They'll cruise you around, and you could look into vacant properties in areas. You can look into vacant properties in C-class areas, B-class areas, A-class areas. See what you're really comfortable with, right? Go to HoltonWise.com, I'm sure. You're familiar with the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. You just go to holtonwise.com, click the tools and resources tab, and there it is. I've graded everything on an A to F scale. You can hook up with any random realtor. Um, you know, if you if you jive with them well, and they'll, I'm sure they have no problem driving you around. You know, driving you around town, showing you properties. Um, but what they probably won't be able to do, April, they probably won't be able to look at the property as I look at it as a cash flow vehicle but that's again that's why the MLS search and analysis show exists there is no reason that you can't drive around get a feel for 10 15 properties understand the neighborhoods you're comfortable with like I'm comfortable in DC BA but maybe you actually physically come here uh, and, and hang out in a C-class neighborhood in Cleveland I'll tell you a C-class neighborhood in Cleveland is a lot different uh, than when you're used to there in Seattle so maybe you hang out in that C-class neighborhood and you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe C-class really isn't for me. And you save up some more money so you can get into the Parma market. Or maybe you're like, yeah, I got this. C-class is fine. Tour 10 empty houses. Then when a property uh, that's already got tenants in there pops up in that, in that area, you're already comfortable with it. You can buy that property with your inspectors going into it. Or maybe you toured some empty ones uh, and you decide you want to target that property. Go ahead and put the offer in through with that agent. You don't have to use me as your agent. You could put the offer contingent on your normal due diligence stuff, your inspection, your appraisal, but you could also make it contingent on one of these MLS analysis from me. And then you just purchase the analysis and I will break it all down exactly as you need to see it as an investment. Like, you know, they've toured it, you saw it, you're like, yeah, I feel it, I like this property. 
write the offer through that agent. I mean, they drove you around. You, you got to give them a little something, right? It's only fair. You wouldn't want to cut them out of the deal. You got to pay them for their time. Um, but then, you know, get your expertise as an investor from me. I'll give that to you. They could write the offer. You close that transaction. After that, the Holton Wise team, we can come over, take the property over, and then we'll handle all the renovations, get it totally ready to go, and then we'll put tenants in it for you. And you could utilize it that way. Uh, so, you know, we're giving you as much information as possible. We want to be as transparent as possible. But at the same time, we have a certain level of demand. So we must use all of our human capital uh, in the most efficient way possible for the company. And that's why we do everything through video. So I hope that answered all of your questions about Cleveland investing, investing in general, how we do things here at Holt Wise. And I hope we went through all of your uh, questions on the particular property on Tuxedo. Remember that's James Wise denied. It's kind of like fool's gold uh, for you personally. On the surface, it appeared like it could be a very, very good deal because we were priced so much lower than everything in the neighborhood and it's a highly desirable neighborhood. Uh, but diving into it a little bit deeper, it just turns out that the cost is just too much for your current budget right now. And even if your budget was higher, the, the amount of work to get there, it still just wouldn't be worth it because there's very, very little equity. Essentially, the juice just one worth to squeeze in this situation. So I'd like to think you got a lot of value out of this, even though my audio uh, isn't up to its normal studio quality. Uh, either way, whether or not it sounds super studio quality or a little bit rough and echoey like it does today, saving $37,000 is worth the price tag of the MLS search and analysis product that you bought. For everyone else who's watching April's video, if you want me to analyze any of your properties, again, I'm the number one seller of investment property in Cleveland. If you haven't done so, in the show notes below, you can sign up for my daily email list. I'll mail you one of my properties every day at one o'clock. Make sure you smash the subscribe, like, and share button on our YouTube channel, Holton Wise TV, coming at you every day, giving you opportunities, education, and we're in more markets than Cleveland. We are bringing you what you need to know as investors in pretty much the entire Midwest. So you guys can use these properties for what I feel they're best used for, investment vehicles. Uh, so definitely do that. And then if you go to HoltonWise.com, if you click on the property search for sale tab, okay, that's where you can subscribe to my mailing list. And if you go down, these are all the price points for all of the analysis products that we offer. This is the base package, what April got right here. This is the base package. This is the entry level package where I analyze everything from a desktop computer. But as you see, if you have the local knowledge and experience, you can pull a lot just from those pictures. But if you want even more data, um, you know, we'll actually send my team out and they'll film inside of the properties. We can compare two properties. If you don't see any properties, like April, she went out and found this deal herself uh, and she liked it, she wanted to know about it or if she ever flew to town and drove around with another realtor, you know, she could bring me specific deals and I could break them all down. But maybe you're a person who doesn't know the deal you want. You want me to just find you a deal. Maybe you're on my daily email list. And as I said, every day they come out, I get 15, 20 offers the same day. Maybe the offers, the properties, you know, you can't get a deal because other investors who have been doing this longer and are more aggressive than you are just snatching those deals, stealing the deals out from under you. You can task me you can be like, James, this is my criteria. This is what I want. Go find it for me. I will search the MLS and I will try to find you something as close to meeting your criteria as possible. Now, if your criteria is fucking stupid, like if you're like, James, give me a $40,000 house that rents for $10,000 a month. Well, I'm probably not going to find that. So I'm going to find you like the best property uh, that I think is available. Um, so if your criteria is wrong, like I'm not pulling fucking rabbits out of hats here, just so you know. Uh, so if your criteria is wrong, the video is going to be me finding you a property that's the closest to your criteria and then explaining to you with my market knowledge uh, why your criteria isn't achievable in this market. So it'd be a great way for you to really get a firm grasp of the market today. And if you're watching all these other videos, because if you go down even uh, further on HoltonWise.com there, it says click here for the MLS property search and analysis videos we've done for other clients. You could watch, you know, properties we've done for other people. like. April has already seen this video before anybody else did because I keep them private for a while and then I release them later so you guys can't go in and steal April's deals. If you want your own, you're going to have to pay for it. But you could watch other people's 
uh, past analysis products to learn the market as well. I give that information out for free. I will always continue to give that information out for free for all of you guys. But no, market's always moving. It's going up, it's going down, it's going up, it's going down. Um, so if you're watching this video 10 years, like I made this video uh, in May of 2019. That's, it's May 20th, 2019 right now I'm filming this video. Uh, if you're watching this, and it's 2029, the market might be very different. So you're gonna to wanna to get an updated analysis uh, if you're trying to look into the market specifically at that time. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys. April, I hope you went over everything you wanted. Everyone else, again, one more time, do me a solid and smash the like, subscribe, or share button. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's two hundred sixty thousand dollar houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, holding wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all fifty states. This deal is one hundred percent. James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.